Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another spooky season. Boo, 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 Welcome. We have a bunch of cheese wings. <laughs> These are cheese chicken wings. Like you know, fried chicken. You know cheese. You know how we dipped it in the cheese. But now there's a cheese powder that you can buy in bulk on Amazon, which honestly should be very alarming. And I don't think it's up to health and safety code. But I bought what? it. Okay, I bought it all. What do you mean? <laughs> and I covered it in this mysterious powder that is cheese powder. I'm so excited about it. We have cheese powder covered cheesy corn dogs, chicken sandwiches, cheese covered mozzarella. Are you gagging? <laughs> Are you gagging? <laughs> then we have some cheese covered wings of all different flavors and I have a Yuketang ramen which I'm just gonna put this on here now so nobody can get upset with me but I specifically asked if they wanted ramen and I said don't be looking at me when you hear me <laughs> slurping away with my ramen so um all right I'm just saying I'm gonna put it out here now I'm gonna go grab one right now then then don't be looking at us <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> do you want one Nah. Okay. Okay. All right. Really? So uh, you remember when you were in school and let's say that you're passing a note to your best friend, right? And mm. she's like on the other end of the classroom. You can't just text? No. It's like you have to write down your deepest, darkest secret on here, right? Uh -huh. But then when you pass it down to everybody in the class and you're like, Psst, pass it down to Susie, mm -hmm. the whole class can just read it. Like you didn't fold it. You didn't do anything. You didn't write it in code. Like they could just read whatever you're writing. Mm -hmm. That's not cool, right? Why would you want that? Cool. You would never do that. Well, if you don't use Express VPN on all your devices, mm. then that's kind of what you're doing, okay? I'm just gonna be honest with you. If you don't use ExpressVPN, you are sending data over an unencrypted internet connection, and it's like sending a note without an envelope. Your message is wide open for people to see. But ExpressVPN is a virtual private network that creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. In other words, it makes sure that nobody can sneak a peek at your letter. I mainly use ExpressVPN because I'm really paranoid about internet safety, and it's not because I do anything super crazy. Every time you connect to an unencrypted Wi-Fi network, like at airports, hotels, coffee shops, you are at risk. And a hacker connected to the same unencrypted Wi-Fi network can steal your personal information with only basic knowledge. They can even gain access to your passwords, your financial details, even emails. ExpressVPN protects you from hackers by encrypting your network data. And they do it so well, it would take a supercomputer billions of years to crack it. Plus, did you know, even if you're not worried about hackers, your internet service provider can see everything that you do. In the US, your internet service provider, even in incognito mode, they can sell your data to ad companies. But it gets crazier. My UK friends and Australian friends, your internet service provider Providers are required to keep logs of the websites you visit, the apps you use, and even private conversations you have for one to two years. Hmm. ExpressVPN puts a stop to all of that by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure encrypted servers, and they do this by masking your unique IP address. Which, side note, you can change your online location with the click of a few buttons, and ExpressVPN has servers in 94 countries, so you can appear to be it from any one of them. Which is great for safety, but also great for Netflix, and for Hulu, and Prime Video, because sometimes there are movies on Netflix that aren't available in the US, that are available in other countries. Someone also told me, before buying a plane ticket, change your location to a different country because prices might be cheaper. Huh. I need to try that because that's a crazy hack if it's true. Yeah, insane. But overall, 10 out of 10 would never go anywhere without ExpressVPN on all my devices. So make sure to check out expressvpn.com slash bis to find out how you can get three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash bis to find out how you can get three months free. Let's get into the food. My you, is your nose okay? It's the cocaine. <laughs> Um, are you sure you don't want to eat it then? It smells pretty good. Are you sure then? No, I'm, I'm good though. Are you sure when I... Oh, shit. Are you sure no, about yeah, it? I'm good. So young, so naive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go in for a mozzarella stick because maybe it's like a mini corn dog, right? Ooh, this is very... It looks very appealing right here. Okay, I'm gonna try this cheese-covered oh, wings. Mm. You know what this looks like? Ramen powder. Mmm. Oh my god, we should do a ramen powder covered one. Mmm. Mmm. The cheese powder is really good. Wow. Ooh. Wow. It's spicy. Whoa, it's so <laughs> spicy. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Oh, shit. 
the, it's a spicy cheese what? powder. There's two powders. Are you kidding me uh -huh. right now? It's Bro, it's nuclear. <laughs> it was pretty spicy. <laughs> Really? That I didn't think you guys were drama queens, but... You try it. My gosh. You guys sound like you're dying. I'm kind of scared to try it. Mm. Maybe I shouldn't try it. Oh, Maybe wow. I should try so, a regular so, rig. So bad. It's delicious though. Okay, this is their... This is the fried chicken joints cheese covered powdered wing. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Okay. okay. All right, let's try this. Mmm. Mmm. Regular cheese is better? Mmm, yeah. Try these white ones, so delicious. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It tastes like a sour cream and onion chip. Yeah. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is so good. <clears throat> mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's kind of crazy. Mm. What is the scariest movie you guys have seen? Oh my god. Spicy <laughs> or scary? <laughs> scary. Which one? It's, it's a Korean movie. Okay. Oh my god. If you haven't watched it yet, mm -hmm. I want you to watch it. Okay, what is it called? Hunjiam? I saw it! Oh, you saw it? The What's Haunted it? Asylum. With who? Um. By myself. No way. Yeah. yeah. Did you tell Bam on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She talked about it. Yeah. Bro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I uh -huh. couldn't sleep for like... Was it that bad? Two days, yeah. But Stephanie laughed. <laughs> she laughed at the... They said there, she I'm said there's a girl one. like that's like... Like, ah! Like that. Yes. Black, black eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All she laughed. Eyes. She laughed. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Hey, you know there's a psychology like where if you enjoy like mm -hmm. scary movies, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. won't be as scared. No, you're a psychopath. A murderer. Oh shit. Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> what? That seals the deal. That <laughs> yeah, seals the deal. It's official, y'all. Y'all heard it here first. No, it's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah, <laughs> facts, bro. <laughs> no, but I thought it was kind of funny for some reason. Yeah, she laughed. I thought what? she's crazy too. Yeah. I screamed my lungs out. Like she says, she doesn't. She laugh at like cringy. Because like, okay, like, like beast. I don't yeah. find beast creepy. She's not scared of beasts. Yeah. Okay. Like if it's gross, I'll like squint and be like, oh, that's nasty looking, you know. Yeah. But I don't get scared. So what scares you? Like people. Human. She humans. hates humans. <laughs> <I think that's laughs> me. Oh my bad. My yeah, bad. him mainly. Um, ghosts scare me if I don't see the ghost, but the minute I see a ghost, it's she less laughs. scary. <laughs> I don't laugh, but it's definitely less scary. That's so interesting. Right? I think That's when I can't saying. see it, I'm imagining something crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. Like, it's something that can't be seen and that's scary to me, right? But the minute that I'm like, what? Like she's not going to be bad. I'm like, bitch, like, what? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's weird, huh? Wow. It's weird. <laughs> that's that's cool. <laughs> That's very unique. Because I screamed like the whole movie. Throughout the whole movie. Like I hated all those like monster movies like Cloverfield 10 or whatever. Oh, I watched that. The Mist. It all like... Were they scary for you? Clover was... It was okay. Yeah, everything is scary until I see the monster. And then I'm like, oh, it's a an octopusy? <laughs> <laughs> so you just have it in your head. Like, where's the Korean mukbangers at? <laughs> just call them up. We're fine. <laughs> okay. The octopusy will be grilled in 0.2 seconds. Okay. Oh, sorry. I mean, we're saving the world, okay? There's a giant octopusy. Call up the Korean mukbangers. We'll do a little grilling mukbang. I don't understand what this is. Is that cancelable? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I didn't say nothing. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> have you guys ever seen the movie The Hills Have Eyes? This actually was terrifying for me. Like all the Freddy Krueger uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, like those are scary for me because technically they're just serial killers. And like, mm -hmm. sure, there's a little bit of a fantastical element where they only kill you in your sleep, but I think it's still like human. But um, The Hills Have Eyes classic Halloween time movie. It is full force spooky season. I remember watching it a million years ago with my sister. I don't even remember the plot that well, but I remember being so thoroughly fucking traumatized and my sister thought it was hilarious. <clears throat> like it is not like most 
horror movies where the whole thing is shot on a potato without the presence of even one freaking studio light like not a single bulb it's not like that listen the only reason that i can stand horror movies and some shows is because it's so dark i don't even know what's going on oh my god what is that so i ordered 300 dollars worth of school cafeteria food <laughs> I oh know. like crayon and glue are you kidding me dad you don't remember these I actually never tried that. These are chicken rings! My school didn't What school, that. babe? What school are it you It must wrong? be a really nice school or something. Grilled cheese! Oh! Yo, school, brownie. Bro school brownie is the best. Public school brownie bitches! <laughs> the cheese sticks! Do you guys remember these? Yo! The cheese? Yeah, the cheese With that tomato sticks. sauce? Yes! That my favorite. Sticks. These used to be my favorite! No, seriously, the my favorite. Sticks. The square pizza. Stay tuned for the... Public school mukbang. We're we gonna have a private school mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hills of Eyes takes place in like broad daylight, a lot of the shots, and it is, it is straight up golden hour in some of these shots. And I remember being so freaking traumatized and terrified. It's about a family called the Carter family, and I'm telling you all of this because the Hills of Eyes is based on a true story. So it's about the Carter family and they're on a road trip and while at a gas station, the gas attendant is like, hey, there is a really nice shortcut to get to wherever you're going if you take this route. And their trailer breaks down in the Nevada desert. There is barbed wire on the ground and all their tires get popped and there's no easy way to say this, but a wild clan of cannibals nearby feels like their trailer it's kind of like a KFC box. Whoa. And whoa, like, whoa. they want to eat them. <laughs> they want to eat the whole Carter family. Yo, yeah. That is scary. They're like the most delicious fried chicken tenders just sitting and waiting and roasting in the Nevada desert. But there's oddly a sad backstory to the cannibals. Um, it's a feral family of cannibals, a family. So picture this, it's not just adults, but little children feasting on the bodies of stranded war w wanderers in the Nevada desert. They're all... um. Disfigured is how they're described, which like, yeah, I guess is supposed to add to the scary part of it, which side note, I saw this TikTok that was like, think of every single movie that you have ever seen. Does the villain have some sort of disability? The backstory here is that the family is disfigured because of nuclear testing gone wrong by the U.S. government. And the U.S. Mm -hmm. government has since covered it up. So when the family, they try to go back into society to live normal lives, society is like, we don't want you here. Society is like, I don't think it's so, you look weirdeth. Which meant that they were pretty much banished to live out in the desert. And the only means of survival is by eating human chicken tenders. Hmm. While we're eating chicken tenders. <laughs> yeah, do you think we taste good though? Like mm. humans? I heard we taste like pork. And who said that? Cannibals. Oh. So um, anyway, they gotta find any means necessary to survive, which means cannibalizing people that are just driving on by through the desert. And it is considered one of the greatest all-time horror movies. But the writer said they were inspired by a true story. And you're like, what the fork, Stephanie? A true story of a cannibal clan that ate people in the middle of the innocent road trips. Like, apparently, it was an incestuous cult at that. Picture this. There's a road in Scotland. And if you see it, you'll probably feel some sort of thick energy nearby. The air is heavy. There's this suffocating feeling all around you. Even if you're driving in your car, maybe your radio starts to act up. You hear a frequency noise that's a little too ear piercing. Now, when the car breaks down, in front of you, in the glow of the headlights, there's a little girl or a little boy. They look wild. They literally look like they've been raised in the wild. Their hair is crazy. It looks like they've never seen a toothbrush in their entire life. Their clothes are tattered. And you start worrying, maybe this child needs my help. But then another pair of eyes is staring into your soul. Another child, then another. And finally, they're joined by their parents who smile at you. And their mouths are filled with rotting teeth. And there are maybe... 24 people standing in front of your car now blocking your way and you don't know what to do do you honk do you run out before you can think it's too late they're climbing on top of your car banging on the windows to let them in because they're hungry mm -hmm. they haven't eaten in a while and you my friend are a yummy chicken tender 
<laughs> you gotta stop that. Okay, that is the story of Sonny Bean, cannibal incest cult. Yeah, okay. The urban legend inspiration behind The Hills Have Eyes is Sonny Bean. Sonny Bean is a man from Scotland, allegedly. He was the son of a modest man. His dad dug ditches and trimmed hedges for a living, and it was thought that Sonny was gonna go down the same route. His dad would teach him how to dig the ditches, and he would take over his dad's job. But he hated it. It was so boring, it was so repetitive. Instead, he thought, why don't I get into tanning? Which is arguably a much worse option, like so much worse. So tanning is an olden day job. It still exists today, but obviously the process is very different. Back then, leather tanners, like you know when you make a handbag out of leather, mm -hmm. where you make a leather jacket out of real leather? You can't just take the cow skin and be like, okay, this is my leather now, because it's stinky and it's got a weird fleshy color and it's just not looking good and it's really smelly. There's hair on it. On the other side, there's like pieces of organs on it. Then there's hair on the other side. It's like fuzzy. Like it's a lot, okay? okay. So back then you would take it to a tanner. They'd be like, oh, nice piece of skin, right? And they would take that raw animal skin that's practically rotting, treat it with chemicals. Like just imagine the scent of rotting skin and chemicals combined into one and just going eau de parfum up your nostrils. <laughs> like straight shot. It was a really gross job. First, you have to soak the animal skin in a pit of lime. The lime is gonna burn off all the animal hair and the remaining flesh. And then the lime is so acidic that once you're done, you have to neutralize it. You have to get something that's high in the, uh, the, the other side of the pH. Chicken shit. So you gotta get chicken shit and rub the leather with chicken shit. I'm not even kidding, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you gotta wash it off. Then they have to be like bathing in a chemical bath for months. It was just the most labor intensive, disgusting, chemical filled, dangerous job. So many people died on this. There were like no safety precautions, no mask, no goggles, no gloves. So Sonny Bean just sat there dealing with raw, stinky, rotting skin with his bare hands. And it's hard to imagine that this kind of environment would breed a cannibal, but it did. Maybe it turned him on. Maybe he had an intrusive thought like, what if I just, um, but he was thinking these. So at some point, Sonny was like, okay, that to me looks good. He quit his job and his happily unemployed self married a woman named Black Agnes Douglas. That's not an intense name. The woman was as intense as her name, okay? The locals accused her of being a witch. So both of them seem to have every reason in the book to skip town together. But the main problem was neither of them are making money. They don't have money. They don't have means for a shelter. They don't have food. So instead of working or finding a job that they would like, they decided to live in a cave. <laughs> the cave was going to be perfect. The cave had a hideout tunnel. Some of the tunnels extended a mile in length. And twice a day, the high tide would come through the entrance of the tunnel so that they would be hidden through the rest of the world. Nobody could come in unless they're swimming in, right? They liked it. It was quaint. It wasn't AD open door, but it was their home for the next 25 freaking years. Or as the legend goes. So now that they have their shelter, they just need food. And it's kind of hard to grow plants in a cave, so they had to think bigger. They needed protein to live. So they started borrowing from travelers that were passing the main road near their cave. Back then, there were tons of traveling salesmen. Can you think about that back then? They just had um, horse traveling carriages, and you don't have any security. Like to protect your goods? Or yourself. <laughs> Crazy, no? Mm -hmm. Don't you think about like, if we were born like 50 years earlier. Oh, I'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not that. Like your only friends would be your neighbors. Mm. Like real friends, not your social media friends. That's very rude. Those are the only friends I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sweetie, those are not real friends. <laughs> <laughs> They're real friends, dad. <laughs> That's crazy. My sister and Andrew are already thinking about it. Thinking about what? Oh, for Sophie? What they're gonna do when Sophie's like, I want a phone. I'll tell them. Go get a job. What yeah. age did you guys get a phone? Sixth grade, fifth grade? Sixth grade, fifth grade? <laughs> Me too. Jesus. That can't be good. We turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we got some issues, but we're fine. When did okay. you get a phone, huh? Like senior year in high school? No. Last year, <laughs> I let him get one. <laughs> when I came to America. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> he bought a phone, okay? He bought a phone on the low low. <laughs> I know his little story, okay? He bought a phone. He snuck money and he bought a phone. Yeah. I bought, bought a black and white phone yeah. when everyone was using color phone. Yeah, and he got beat up. And I was so embarrassed to show my friends. What? Oh, because it's they black and white. Phones and stuff? Yeah. So I never, I told them I never brought it to school, but I always had it in my bag. I just never took it out. Oh, that's kind of... Yeah. yeah. 
sometimes I'd be crying when he tells me these stories. I'd be tears coming out, and then I'm like, wait a minute, why am I f***ing crying? <laughs> it's like not even an emotional story. Anyway, they would find these people in these horse-drawn carriages, mainly noblemen, because those are the only people that had horse-drawn carriages, and they would just attack them. They were sitting ducks in moving KFC boxes. Thank God they did not eat the horses, but they did eat all of the humans, yeah. It's very easy to ambush them. They would drag the human's remains back into their cave, and Agnes would actually pickle the remains. Yeah, she would turn the limbs uh, into pickles. They would take their loot, their gold, their weapons, and uh, yeah, make a few finger sandwiches. <laughs> Literally. <clears throat> finger foods. Literally just eating fingers. Anyway, <laughs> have you ever had a filet me human? Mm -mm. I heard it's not good actually. <laughs> okay, they would preserve all the meat and then they would just be so turned on by their cannibalism that they would just do it nonstop. Agnes gave birth to six healthy girls and eight healthy boys. And when the daughters would get pregnant from the sons, yeah, straight cannibal incest cult, they would just have brother love, sister love type romance and they would have more kids. I mean, the whole family totaled to about 48 members. And they would all live in the cave and they would all eat pickled remains and when they were hungry, they would go out to the main road and kidnap people. So many people started disappearing off the main road that the monarchy was like, we gotta do something about it. All our noblemen are dying, so what do we do? Which side note, other people that did not die, they said that um, if you ever came across the cannibal cult, it was so terrifying. They smelled putrid and they would laugh and get excited, essentially rubbing their palms together, thinking about how they're going to fill their little bellies with you. So it said that the total victim count for the Bean family was 5,593 victims. That is a whole village right there. The monarch felt really pressured to do something about it, so they sent the police to investigate. The term serial killer did not exist back then. Back then, they were just confused, why are people going missing? Like, why are these men being killed? What kind of bandit is it? The police did see the cave near the road, but they just thought that nobody could live in there, so they didn't search it. That was their argument. So the suspicion fell to the local innkeepers, the ones that owned the hotels, the motels, the boarding houses. What did the monarchy do? They put them on wooden sticks and lit them on fire. Yeah, back then was crazy. You could literally have something in your eye and you could be like twitching your eye a little bit and they'd be like, fucking witch, burn her. Even even like doctors back then, mm -hmm. they, they, they wouldn't use like anesthesia. They would just take it out. Yeah, I think about that a lot. Just to be born in this age. I think it's like the best time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> so the police were doing a shit job and the beans were essentially getting away with it. Except they made a very big mistake. The big mistake was that, um, well it probably should have been being a part of an incestuous cannibalistic cult, but it was the fact that they made a smaller mistake. They ambushed a local married couple, but the husband was like jacked. Think of it as like Dwayne the Rock, Rock, <laughs> Am I broken? Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but more jacked, and he was more skilled in combat, and he always carried a pistol and a whole a sword with him, not a knife, a sword. So when he saw a dozen crazy-eyed, feral-looking children staring at him, like, he's like, bring it the fuck on, okay? The sad part is, he couldn't save his wife. He watched as the female cannibals cut her throat and sucked her blood with great gusto, as if it had been fine wine. And then they ripped her belly and pulled out her intestines. Oh my. And it said, such a dreadful spectacle made him very resistant to ex expecting the same fate. So, he fought back really hard after he watched his wife get disemboweled. He lost concentration though, and the Bean family jumped in. But he was injured. The commotion brought onlookers to the road, and they refused to help the Bean family. The Bean family was upset, so they fled. They took the wife's body, and the husband got rushed to medical care, where he told the police everything what happened. And the case of the mysterious killer, who had been terrorizing Scotland for two decades, was finally about to be solved. Even King James said that he was familiar with it. So he ordered 400 of his men to go into the cave and find the Bean family. 400 men came across some of the most disgusting things in that freaking cave. They found, like it was a, it was like the pickle section of a grocery store. They found pickled legs, pickled arms, pickled thighs, hands, feet of men, women, children were hung up in rows like dried beef. This is real. 
Well, it's an urban legend. Okay. Okay, so essentially, there is a little backstory about how this could be even more twisted. England and Scotland were on weird terms. I think they're still kind of weird. Can you tell the American public school system is not doing its job? But they're still like weird, right? They're kind of like beefing, I think, but not really. Anyway, back then they were really beefing. So it said that a bunch of Englishmen made up this urban legend to tell their kids at night to be like, see, Scottish people eat people. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so f***ed up, okay. That a lot of these like folklores, they have these weird backstories that are oftentimes political. And just, what? Why did my dad tell me that? That's really bizarre. How is that a nighttime story? I'm scared. So anyway, they said that they found a bunch of children hung up to dry, like dehydrated beef. There was even a pile of bones just on one side hanging out, and the Bean family, they were outnumbered. So they were brought forth King James himself, and King sat on his little throne, and he was all like, execute them all, make it cruel, make it unusual. So the guys in the Bean family, they stood in front of everybody, including in front of their sisters, their baby mothers, and their mom, and their children. And their arms were cut off, and their legs were cut off, <laughs> their pee were cut off oh, no. and they bled to death from their limbs while their family members screamed in horror. Then when they were dead, they were thrown into a fire. The women of the Bean family were tied to stakes and lit on fire like witches. So yeah, that is the urban legend that inspired The Hills Have Eyes, probably one of the greatest, scariest movies of all time. Interestingly, directors of The Hills Have Eyes who were inspired by The Bean family said, it's interesting because on one hand, you have this feral cannibalistic family that's killing and eating people, but if you look at it, they're not doing anything that much worse than what civilization does to them once they're caught. So like The Bean family, they're eating people, and people are like, that is so uncivilized and disgusting. But then the minute that you catch them, you're like, let's cut their arms off. Their legs were cut mm. off. Their penis was cut off. They were thrown into fire. So he said that the two families in the hills have eyes. They are direct mirrors of each other. For every sister, you have a sister. And like, because technically they're interchangeable. They're like the same. Wow. Mm. I didn't yeah. think about it that way. It's kind of interesting, right? But uh, since we're on the topic of urban legends, did you guys know Japan has a Bloody Mary? Isn't Bloody Mary like international? We talked about how we want to play Bloody Mary a while ago and we are going to, but maybe we should play the Japanese one. I just don't know where we would find a place to do it. She doesn't come to you in every bathroom, like the American Bloody Mary, even though Bloody Mary is not American, but you get it. She is called Hanaka-san. And the legend has it that Hanako-san was just a little girl trying to live out a happy, a happy little childhood. She loved wearing her red skirt, her little red dress. That was her favorite color, red, blood red. She had this cute little bob haircut. Now, it's unclear what happened, but she was murdered in a public school, in the bathroom. Whether she died of abuse from her evil parents or she was murdered by a stranger or bullied by people until she was killed, it's unclear, but she was killed in a public school bathroom. And unlike other Japanese bathroom ghosts, Hanako-san likes to be summoned. She wants to be called on. She doesn't just appear out of nowhere. You have to call to her first. And this is how you do it. You enter the bathroom, and it has to be a third floor bathroom of a school. Has to be. She can't drop through the floors and fly through the walls. What do you think this is? She lives on the third floor. And then you get to the very last stall, and you knock three times. And you ask, Hanako-san, are you there? And you wait. Yes. <laughs> no, literally, most likely you will hear a very faint voice that says, Yes, I am. Are you sure it's not Konnichiwa? Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what language is the scariest? Because I don't know if Annyeonghaseya would do it. <laughs> Doesn't sound scary. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, no. <laughs> I also don't know if Ni Hao would really be that scary either. Oh, what, you think? Hello? Is <laughs> scary? <laughs> It'll be more creepy. I think hello is scary. How are you? <laughs> Not good. So uh, now, what, what happens next depends on Hanako-san's mood. <clears throat> which like, I don't know, I just don't like that. Like that's like calling your mom. What happens next depends on her mood. Are you about to have a good conversation or is she about to compare you to her friend's doctor daughter? We don't freaking know. But if 
Hanako-san is in a good mood. She might let you live. She might share some <laughs> giggles with you. But if she's reminiscing about her past, about her bullies, or maybe if you remind her of her killer, she will drag you down into the toilet until you drown to death in your own urine. Hmm. That's it? That's how you summon her? That's how you summon her. Oh. Yeah. Let's go to school and try it. Bruh, schools freak me out. Apparently not the food though. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we're gonna die. That right there is a horror movie. That I have $300 worth of f***ing cafeteria food in my freezer right now. <laughs> what made you want to try it? Um, I saw a TikTok. Uh oh. And I was like, ooh, I got a mukbang. Every viewer is like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is, the worst part is. Okay. This is like deep when I had COVID. We got this cough syrup that's like a controlled substance. I don't know why it was prescribed to us. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's like the craziest cough syrup. You take it and you're just dead all night. Like you knock out. Like it's insane. It's melatonin on crack. I've never had anything like this before. Dang. I take the cough syrup, okay? Because I'm about to go to sleep. My fiance took the cough syrup. He's knocking out already. This is the only time I've ever seen him knock out on this cough syrup. Very dangerous, but it was prescribed. We had to take it. And I saw that TikTok and I just had this overwhelming urge to pry my eyes open and f***ing order three. And I'm dying with COVID. I have a fever. I have body aches. I'm so cold. And I'm like this. And he goes, babe, let's go to sleep. And I go, honey, honey. I found school cafeteria food <sighs> and I remember him going okay I gotta get it all I gotta catch them all oh gotta catch them all and he's like all. do it tomorrow and I literally just stayed up and that is what happened it's cough syrup decisions I'm gonna be honest with you anyway bye that's it Wait, what <laughs> I'm sorry I just thought it would be funny <laughs> Okay, it's terrifying, yes, but maybe not as frightening as Slaughterhouse Canyon. This is a United States urban legend, and it's a real place. It's not a random school bathroom. This is in Arizona. It's called Luana's Canyon, and it is said that a small, poor family lived in a shack. In a Luana. small, poor family? Uh, like a poor family. A small. <laughs> a like, small family. A small family, but they were very poor. Okay, okay. a small, poor in family. In a shack. A small, poor family. Okay. I'm losing my mind. A small poor family lived in a shack there. We don't know how, we don't know any of their names, but Luana is named Luana's Canyon because Luana the mom. That's the name. That's the only name that we have, right? So the family had moved to Arizona for the gold rush. Which, side note, did you know the gold rush is not just a US thing? Apparently every country has their own gold rush. So in the context of the US, or at least for me, gold rush has happened in like the west coast right where people found gold in the middle of nowhere so all these lower class families would start migrating to the west hoping promising to get a quick dirty fortune i think and like my dad's still in the middle of gold rush yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> oh no wonder bro he loves it no wonder it. he's not coming home yeah yeah he truly believes there's gold in these soils mm -hmm. <laughs> how did they know gold was valuable though <laughs> back, in the, back in the day right that's a good question that'd be a good question <laughs> that'd be a good question you asking all the right questions right <laughs> so anyway um they thought that they could just make a quick dirty fortune and that's why luana and her husband and her three kids ended up in arizona luana's husband was a minor and they never had a steady regular income it was it was rough every day luana sat around hoping that he would come home with a smile on his face and say i found gold i struck gold but instead he would come home head hung and luana would worry about how to feed the rest of the family she had three kids and she saw them wasting away she saw them starving literally disappearing in front of her eyes because of how thin and frail they were getting they were so malnourished one morning, the couple woke up, got into their routine. Luana made breakfast out of a few pieces of food left. Her husband got ready for work and uh, he left. He had a really good feeling about the day. He thought that he was gonna strike gold and maybe he did. Luana would never know because he never came back home. That was the last time she ever saw him. Did he strike gold? Was he killed, murdered? Did he end his life because he couldn't bear the responsibility of his family anymore? 
We don't know. Days turned into weeks, and Luana had completely run out of food. She couldn't go to work. She had to watch her kids. They were too young to watch themselves. But then when she didn't have food, then what? The more days passed, the kids would scream and cry louder and louder, and they were hungry, and Luana knew it. She couldn't watch them starve. So she snapped. One night during a thunderstorm, she put on her wedding dress, a white, long, lacy dress that had promised a life full of love and hope. She grabbed an axe. And then in the middle of the night, she chopped up her children into pieces. She felt like she was ending their suffering by hacking their little bodies into pieces. Then she chucked them into the local river and her little shack in the canyon earned the name Slaughterhouse. Allegedly, all the walls are covered in blood, all the floors, and they've just kind of been embedded into the wallpaper and the floors now. When she was done, her white wedding dress was now red from the blood, and Luana was so overcome with guilt that she walked into the cold river and stayed there until she died, watching the remains of her kids bob on by. Today, the slaughterhouse still stands. It's actually just a 12 minute drive from Kingsman, Arizona, and it's set on quiet nights when the moon is full. You can still hear the screams of Luana's children. Locals say it's a popular spot for high schoolers to go to and um, you'll usually drive away after you hear all the little kids screaming in the middle of the night. Is this true though? You can go find out, then Find out for us? No, thank you. Could you ever be like one of those, oh, you know where we should go? What? We should go to Savannah, Georgia. One of the most haunted cities in all of the United States. I'm not gonna go, honey. You talk so much crap. I'm <laughs> not gonna go. Like, you wait, we're not even. Go. We can't even do Uji or you can't even Bloody do Mary exactly. together. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. We? Should we? No. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? And you want to though? If, if the whole family goes. Um, I think I would feel okay. Listen, there are some people that I just feel safe with, in terms of ghost. I feel safe with him for everything else, but when it comes to ghosts. I don't f with this guy because he be on this side like, ooh. He's gonna make it extra yeah. scary. And then he's gonna be like, Dad, come here. Okay, wait, here's what we're gonna do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then I'm gonna be like, oh my god. I don't trust you either because you're working with him. What's, you're working what's for the other fun? team. Yeah. So I don't trust you guys. I trust your sister, but all we do is scream together. I think I need like my dad to come. Then I'll go to Savannah. What, what? is he gonna do? Yeah, he gonna do? <laughs> because my dad is the type to go. Hey, oh, they're he, all fucking idiots. Oh, that is true. He's gonna scream too. <laughs> yeah, he might actually scream. No, he doesn't get scared. Okay, Andrew. Oh, scared. I need Andrew. How do you stop? Andrew's scared, okay? <laughs> he's scared, dude. You, let me call him and see. So who do we call? He's down. Oh. Who do we call? The Ghostbuster. The <laughs> Ghostbuster. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with her hair? <laughs> Holy sh**. Oppa, I have a question. Are you scared of ghosts? No. So if we what? go to like a haunted hotel, like you'd be fine? Yeah, I'd be fine. Like sleeping over at the whole haunted hotel and everything? Like not one of those Halloween attractions, like a real haunted like Like those house. abandoned looking. Like, are you, are you saying like by myself? No. Yes, by yourself. No, with us. Oh yeah, I mean, I'll go. What? I told you. What about you. by yourself? There's some, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> he, he said he's not doing all that by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for today's video. Like for real for yeah. real this time? I hope you guys enjoyed. I know that these weren't the spookiest urban legends. It's gonna ramp up for Spooktober. Don't be scared. Don't don't come at me later like, ooh, Stephanie, it's so scary. I love you. Make sure to check out ExpressVPN linked in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.